Yeah. Here's another really challenging part about jumping into making beats for a living. How do you? How did you know personally when your beats were good? <clears throat> oh, I, I mean, to this day, I still have that kind of imposter syndrome where I don't believe my beats are good. But there comes a time where you so you build momentum because whether it be from like a single sale or whether someone DM'd you to set to you that they like your music, that positive bit of momentum makes you feel good. So then you start creating more music. And once you create more music, you get better at it. And once you get better at it, um, you start to be confident, more confident in the content and music that you uh, produce. And that's when you ha- kind of have those little feelings sometimes that, you know, when you've made, finished the beat and you're like, oh, this, you know, you, you really believe in it and you really think that it's something that, um, you know, that's worth putting out. And the more you do it, the more, the more you feel confident in your work and you, the more you feel your beats are good and to be heard by people. So this is a good question. Um, and it's, it's something that I've noticed about your beats. Cloud9 Music says, GC is really good at creating space in his beats for vocals and keeping things simple yet organic. Does he believe that less is more in the beat making process? Um, yeah. So obviously, depending on the genre and what sort of um, vibe or beat that you're going for, it definitely pays to leave space for the artist. Um Otherwise, the fin- like the final product is going to be like so muddy, and it's not going to be nice to listen to. Um, but more often than not, I think less is more. Uh, less is more. But again, it really depends, and um, you should trust your ear and your intuition. Um, and the, basically, the more you make beats, you'll be able to kind of like tell when to dial in a bit more and when to leave a bit more space for the artist. But yeah. Yeah, did you have did you have any strategies? Did you use like spectrum analyzers? Did you put acapellas in your beats? How did you train your ear to to know when your beat was finished and when you needed to just stop adding elements and, and just create space for the vocals? Um I guess because with beats I always start with the hook first, because that's the busiest section of the instrumental. So once you've finished that, I mean the no part of the beat's going to be any busier. So from there, you can either add an extra, <clears throat> add an extra melody in, or kind of like you know, on the top line or something like that, and turn the turn the monitors up. And because people don't understand that the artist, that the voice is an instrument itself, and you've got to leave space for that as well. Um, yeah. So once you finish the hook. Uh, put a melody in there, hum the melody, whatever it takes to kind of like get it into your ears and then subtra- add or subtract accordingly. Okay, so you're you're kind of a, a proponent, and I've heard this from other producers, especially Bubba Got Bees. Chords, top line, drums, and that's all you need, really. Pretty much the, the foundations of a song, yeah. 